Well, it was one of the uh, first experiences I had with, with um, a really big shark in, out there in the ocean. I had had some experiences with hammerhead sharks, but I never had an experience with a, a real large shark. Before. Tiger shark. What, honey? A tiger shark? It was a tiger shark. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, I had a friend that had a new boat. And he came over and he asked me and uh, my son Mark if we'd like to go out in this boat. He had a new Boston whaler. And he wanted to go out and shoot some fish for dinner. We were spear fishermen. And we had spear guns and we jumped in his boat and it was kind of late in the afternoon. It was a little bit too later than normal uh, if, when you go spear fishing. It's not really a good idea to go spear fishing late in the day. But we jumped in the boat, we went straight out, out of Snake Creek. And we went out way out to the outside reef. And the water's a little deeper there. But we uh, saw a, what looked like a pretty good area. And we threw an anchor over, and uh, this boy Mike and my son Mark jumped in the water, and they swam ahead of the boat because it seemed to be a pretty strong current. And I took my time getting my gear on, and I had a wetsuit with a belt, wet weight belt, and um, put up the dive flag, and I slipped in the water with my mask on, and we like to free dive. And the water seemed to be about, I would say about 35 feet deep right in this one spot. And I looked directly under the boat and there was some really big snapper. It looked like they were Cabrera snapper. And so I just dove straight down first dive. And the sun was starting to set over on the west. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful sky, but the sun was starting to go down and there were some clouds on the horizon. And as I went down, I shot this snapper. And I hit him right, right in the head. And he just started shaking and rattling his just rattling, and I'm, I was real calm and real relaxed because of my first dive, and I was just very relaxed. And, and but when the sun went down a little bit, I hadn't come back up yet. I was taking my time, and I took the spear, and the fish was on the spear, and I put the spear back into my gun, and I kind of looked around because the current was moving pretty fast. And he was making so much noise rattling. I started thinking, I better, you know, keep an eye out for something. I didn't know what I was looking for, but I knew that he was making a lot of racket. And so I started out real slow, just relaxed. And as I came up, about halfway up, I saw this huge shark, and he was coming up current. And he was kind of looking like this. And then all of a sudden, he picked up the vibrations of the fish and just made a correction and just came at us like 50 miles an hour. And I had just enough time to take my spear gun and hold it up in front of me because he was coming at me with his mouth wide open. And I had my spear gun and he just rammed right into my spear gun and just pushed me back a 
about, you know, five or six feet. He, he was gigantic. And as it went over, he couldn't get the fish. And so I tried to shake my fish, trying to get it off, but I was afraid to spin the tip off because I didn't want to get my arm bit. If I could spin the tip off, then the fish would come off the spear. And, uh, you know, the shark would chase the fish. So, the shark came around again, and he did the same thing. He just <clears throat> ran right over my spear again. And I had the spear right in my the gun, right in my waist. And he just kind of went right over me like that. And it came back again. And so I started trying to poke him and shake the, the fish off. And the next thing I know, he stopped and kind of like circled me, like you're trying to figure it out why you couldn't bite that fish. Because <laughs> I had a long spear, and the fish had come back down on the spear. He went on the end of the spear. And I looked over, and there was a very big barracuda. <clears throat> I would say the barracuda weighed probably 50 pounds. He was probably about five feet long. And he was right next to my face. And the next thing I knew, he just came in and he just bit that snapper right in half. <laughs> and he just gobbled up that half. And the shark was trying to get the other half. <laughs> and luckily, the, the other half just fell off of the spear. So the shark grabbed that and gobbled it up. Well, there was a lot of scales and all kinds of stuff, like bloody water and everything all around me. And the shark circled around me a couple more times, and, and I was screaming and yelling and, you know, trying. I mean, I was really worried. And I'm poking. Every time he got close enough, I'd poke him. Well, then he kind of, like, got tired of me, and he decided, you know, I guess that all the fish was gone, and he just disappeared. Well, by that time, I looked up, and the boat was, like, about city block away. I'd say maybe the length of a football field. Oh, no. And so, and the current was very strong, and it was really moving me away very quickly. And so, but the fish was, the shark was gone, the barracuda was gone, and so I started trying to get my composure looking around, and all of a sudden, the shark shows up again. Uh -huh. And he starts circling me. And he's circling me tighter and tighter and tighter. And I, now I really was worried. I thought, you know, he's going, he wants to bite me, uh -huh. you know. And if he had bit me, I would, probably would have never made it back to the boat. So every time he got close, I jabbed him with my spirit gun. And then he got to where when I tried to jab him, he would kind of get out of the way so he wouldn't be close enough for me to hit him. Mm -hmm. And we did that for, oh, I would say for about five minutes, <laughs> just circling me. And I was going further and further away from the boat. And there was a, a enough wind where you really couldn't call for help. It was too far away that no one could hear me. So, but eventually the shark got tired of swimming around me. He got, he, I guess he decided that I was not good to eat. I had, every time he got close to me, I, he got poked with this spear. So he disappeared. So I looked around some more. I was afraid to swim back to the boat. Well, finally, after 
looked in and looked in and looked and I started swimming back to the boat and I swam with my head this way and I would swim on my stomach and then I'd swim on my back and kick my feet. You know, I'd just keep kicking my feet and making slowly back to the boat. And by that time the sun had set. And it was still light, but it wasn't real bright. And so I saw my son and Mike standing up. They were kind of looking around for me, trying to see me. And so I just kept swimming and kept swimming and kept swimming and looking around and was just scared to death, really, that he, that he would uh, come back. But I thought he would come back from against the current rather than with the current because that's how the scent goes down with the current. And I made it back to the boat. And I got in the boat. It came home, it was dark. And they had speared a couple nice fish. And we had fresh fish for dinner. So it was quite an, uh, an experience. And uh, I've never, I've been around a lot of sharks before where hammerheads have tried to, to bite my flippers, and but I was never so scared as that tiger shark, which, you know, I estimated him to be like a, a close to a thousand pounds in size. Well, the very next day, I went down to Holiday Island, Well Harbor, and all, and they were hanging a tiger shark by the tail that weighed 890 pounds. And that was about the same size as the shark that I saw. And so I wasn't too far along. Obviously, he looked bigger than me because I was in the water with him. But 890 pounds is a very big shark. And I looked all over the shark to see if there were any marks on him. I thought maybe it was the same shark. But they said that no, that was a, um, that there was a lot of sharks that were migrating along the coast. And they had seen uh, many, many more sharks that day. That those sharks were moving from the north down, uh, I guess they're moving on down to South America or the Caribbean or whatever. But that was my story. So I hope that you know you like it, and I hope that my family likes it, and I hope my grandchildren like it too. So, adios everyone.